Okay, hey everyone. Welcome, welcome. Hey Blake, hey Eric and Lisa, hey Helen, how's it going? All right, I'm gonna get set up here while we are waiting on Dr. Bart and share it out to Facebook. Um, so that we can, everyone can join in. This is our last call of 2020, our last show of 2020. Okay. So jump in, say hi. Yeah, woo. hello, Whitney, good to see ya. Okay. Yep, the Health Made Simple Show last episode of 2020. So we're actually going to be talking about practicing health and what are some health goals for 2021 that um, we can all be setting. So we've got a couple of announcements to start off with too. So we'll get started in just a second here. So... 2020 goals. 2021. Right. Sam says hi. I look tan. Ah, it's summer. Ah, oh, I'm such a summer girl. I am much happier when it is summer. And right now, here in Perth, Australia, the weather has been beautiful. It's been really nice. We've had some gorgeous summer days. And so it's been really exciting. Dr. Bart, welcome. Last call 2020. Yeah. How about that? Huh? No, guys, we made it. We survived it. <laughs> we did survive. No, we thrived. We thrived. We thrived it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, cool. Well, we are live on um, Facebook, so let's uh, let's dive in, shall we? Get started. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, awesome. Well, welcome guys to another episode of the Health Made Simple Show. Um, as always, I like to start by introing our host, Dr. Bart Precourt, who has been a healthcare provider for over twenty years, practicing a range of modalities, including chiropractic, acupuncture, kinesiology, nutrition and supplementation, and functional testing at his clinic, Balance Health Studio in Seagrove Beach, Florida. He's also the founder of the Health Edge program, which is a cutting edge online health program for entrepreneurs and executives wanting to take their health to the next level. So he's worked with thousands of people around the world, including celebrities and athletes. And so we are excited to hear about Health Goals 2021. We're gonna, we're gonna dive into uh, a little bit about that tonight, but first you've got some announcements. I do. I got a couple. I got a couple of announcements that I want to make, and um, yeah, I mean, I'm excited about this topic too because I'm, I'm looking forward to, even for myself, kind of paint a picture, an outline, of kind of the health goals or the things we should move toward in in 2021. So we'll dive into that, and that'll be fun in just a moment here. But so two quick announcements. Um, most of you already know yet there is we got our cleanse coming up. So January 4th, we are in the last couple of days, and Karen, we're going to extend. For the folks who are listening tonight, I think this is going to be the end of it, though. We're going to extend the early bird special, but this is going to be a hard line real shortly here. So if you guys haven't made your commitment yet, I know a lot of the people that are watching this already are. It's going to be a huge community this time. I'm so excited. And we're infusing a lot of new things. So if you've cleansed in the past, you know, buckle your seatbelts. We're going to be adding some new things. So it's going to be really cool. And again, why cleanse? You name it. Just get your body clean, lose some weight. Sure. Brain fog, high blood pressure, you know, night sweats, fatigue, all of those things. But somewhere drawing that line in the sand, this is a good time. January 4th is our kickoff. That's going to be Monday night. So we're, I'm going to be live next Monday night. I'm going to coach through the whole thing. And again, we're going to have a nice community there, which would be awesome. And then the other announcement I want to make a little bit different here, but I know time flies. So we just got to kind of uh, put these on our calendars. This is Karen. This is a little bit of a give back moment for you, me, for our team, for back, you know, all our, you know, all our peeps, I want to call it the tribe. We're having Dr. Dave Hogshead come live at Balance Health Studio in Seagrove. And when I say it's give back, it's, it's an event we put on. I bring Dr. Dave in, you know, once, sometimes twice a year. There's no charge. 
the only condition is that we have a very limited amount of people that can be there. Um, he, he does a four hour seminar. It's live. It's interactive. It's there's questions. You meet all the other people like yourself there, which is awesome. So we will probably have the sign up for that. I tell you what, if you guys want, if you think you're going to be in and you want to be in town, it's going to be February 6th. We'll run it probably 10 to 2 a 10 a.m. to like 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, so just kind of put that on your calendars. Uh, the topic we're determining it right now, but it'll be just be something awesome, awesome about your health. And so that's February 6th. It's a Saturday, but we're going to have to get pre-registered. We only could fit so many people in our studio. We have it right there in Seagrove, Florida. So that's an announcement for everybody. So put it on your calendars. If you know you want in, you've been there before, you've seen Dr. Dave speak, don't miss it. There's new stuff coming out and Dave's going to be bringing all the latest and the greatest. So, and of course we'll have them here again, but when it's live, it just takes it to a whole nother level. So those are my two announcements. Awesome. Judy wrote, those that I've attended have been great. Oh, we've got a few people saying he's so great. So yeah, and he was awesome on the show. So uh, if I could fly over for it, I would. Nice, nice. Um, awesome. All right. So let's, uh, let's dive into what we want to talk about tonight. And we were talking about it before we got started, that we want to focus it around practicing healthcare in 2021. What, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so you know, I think I think for all of us, you, when we look back over the course of the year, you know, I'll tell you, well, for all of us, we realized that health became the number one commodity in the world. That yeah. anyway, down like there's nothing else that could have that type of impact on the world other than a scare of health. And you know, one of the things, and I, I was I talked to you about it, and I've talked to a lot of other practitioners like myself, and just other people who are practicing health on a regular basis. That this this is there's a reason we have to practice health. So, you know, this past year, I think in our last show, I talked about it and the number's gone up, but we're over 200. I think it's like 215 or 222 or something like that. Of uh, People that I have helped through COVID that have tested oh. positive. And, you know, fortunately, Karen, none, none of those people have passed away. Um, and, and there's been two hospitalizations, um, maybe three. Um, but all of them made it back out and, and they're all, you know, back into their normal lives. Some having some side effects um, after the COVID symptoms, you know, and some, you know, post symptoms and we're working on those as well. But the reason I bring that up is this. So why, why would that 200 plus people maybe fare better than other people? And not like my tribe is better than any other tribe. It's not that. But the majority of those people that I've worked with are practicing healthcare. Literally, they're practicing being healthy. And here's what I know for certain. This is the sad part about it all. And this is what you and I were talking about, that there are some people out there that don't practice health. They eat, you know, unfortunately, they're eating at fast food restaurants. They have stress. They have all kinds of things in their life. The opposite of trying to regenerate new cells and, you know, level themselves up. And then that individual gets hit with COVID. We call them comorbidities in healthcare, but they get hit with something like COVID, a nasty virus that can really wreak havoc on the cells of our body. And they're not in practice to fight it off. So when, if I was to get that phone call from that person who doesn't practice at all, the chances of them doing much better be, in the moment is going to be very difficult because they're not practicing health. And we got to practice health on all levels. And that's what tonight, so tonight I'm going to kind of give this broad range of where do we kind of like, where are we going to throw our darts this year? Where are we going to put our emphasis and our energy and how we make sure not just for moments in time, like you got, you know, we're doing the cleanse, like this is a perfect time to level it up, but then how do we carry that through the course of the year? The challenge, what I see with most of the people who've passed, they aren't necessarily practicing health. And listen, I know some people that were, you know, healthy also passed, but the majority know. They weren't practicing health. So for that reason, practicing health and then kind of getting excited about it is really what I'm hoping that we can like, you know, influence some people in our takeaway tonight is that, you know, people are like, listen, I can do this. I can continue to level up here when it comes to my health, as long as I have a strategy and where does it go from today to January to February to March, April, May, June, and moving forward. And I got plans for us. And the thing I love most about that is it's, again, focusing on what we can control, right? Because we can't control the virus out there or new viruses in the future or something else that might come up. Um, you know, different things do come up throughout our lives. And so, as you said, the thing we can control is, is what are we practicing on a daily basis? How are we looking at after our health? How are we 
uh, up leveling our mindset. Yeah. Leveling up our mindset. I'm in Australia. Leveling up, right? Yeah. And you're absolutely right there. We And that's the whole thing. We can't control it. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's interesting. We were talking, um, hopefully she's not too loud there. Uh, we were talking off air. And and I don't know that I've mentioned to, the, to our audience that my wife and I tested positive for COVID. Yeah. So we had COVID. And, and I say that because, and I say it kind of like, oh, yeah, we had it. And it's in the reason that it's not that big of a deal for us. Oh, man, and I hope this comes across right to everyone is because we practice health regularly. And listen, by no means my same perfection. Early on, I told my wife, so listen, when it comes to a virus, the best case scenario could be that you could get it early on, get exposed to it, develop some antibodies and get it out of your mind a little bit. So several months ago, that's exactly what happened. Was it, did it suck for me? Sure it did. Lost my taste and smell. You know, I was run down, I was super fatigued for several days, even like as motivated as I can get, as much energy I can have at times. I had no energy. You know, week 10 days later, back in the groove. And if I didn't practice health, I, man, I tell you what, one, my brain, my thoughts, my emotions would not have been there. But I had to constantly talk to myself, talk to my wife. My wife would talk to me. We got this. We're going to get through this. We're going to be just fine. And that conversation only happens because we've been practicing, not for days, not for weeks, not since March, but for decades in our life. And we, you know, and the bar just keeps getting, rate, you know, leveled up a little bit higher each time. And I, and I share that because that practice of health, that what's, that's what gives us some emotional strength, which we're going to talk about in just a moment here. That emotional strength, that emotional stability only happens when we're doing that stuff. So I'll give you my, my simple example. Because I love sports, we're going to use a sports analogy. Let's just say, and hopefully you guys understand this one. Let's just say for, for a moment here, um, we'll, we'll do a baseball analogy that you're going to get a chance to be in the World Series. You're going to be the batter. Bases are loaded. Bottom of the ninth inning, you know, three on, two out, three, two count, whatever. And it's a World Series. You're going to get up to the plate. And if you get a base hit, your team wins and the whole world is a better place to live, right? But you get up there, but you haven't practiced ever. You're guaranteed yeah. out. You got no chance at doing this awesome thing. And that is the perspective. That is every that is the opportunity we have with our health. And that's the opportunity people are missing out on. And what we're missing out on often is living our lives to the fullest, living our lives complete, living, you know, living these, you know, we're given these gifts, right? And then we're kind of blowing them by not being fully present, by not being fully healthy. So tonight's message is about these five different things that if we move in the direction of making these better, we've got an awesome, we got really a lot to look forward to in 2021. Yeah, I love that. And also, you know, you have been practicing health for decades, as you were saying, but even if you haven't been, it doesn't mean that you can't start now. You can always start now. All we really have is what we can do now into the future. Whatever you've done in the past, let it go, right? Start today, start 2021 and really uh, make, a, make a new start where you do focus on prioritizing healthcare. Yes, 100% amen to that. And I think for everyone listening you're on Facebook, thanks you guys for tuning in here or you're here live with us. And again, if you have questions, of course, tonight or comments, let's have them. Um, that's, a, that's an important thing because I'll, you know, as, as a clinician, you know, I often hear people say, well, I can't blank. I had blank. No, let's not use our labels and those things as curses or they're not kryptonite. They're not anchors to keep us in one place. We've got to look at them, recognize what they are and see how we move past them. So, and again, that's where, really where these five things come from, because the five things we'll talk about tonight, it doesn't matter where you are or where you've been. It only matters on these things as we're moving toward, you know, forward, that if we can improve these, you are leveling up, you are getting healthier, you are getting stronger, you are improving the quality of your life. Yeah, awesome. All right, so what's number one? All right, so let's, let's dive, dive right in. Number one is this, so let this be the year of getting clean. You know I'm gonna talk about this and here's where really the focus. And I wanna, I wanna make this just as simple as I can and not even, just, just brass, brass, like just let's just talk about getting clean for a second here meaning that everything this year, let's put an emphasis on everything that goes into your body or on your body being organic. Why? 
So listen, we cannot get well if we don't clean the cell. Often, or in the past, oftentimes people think of organic, well, that's, you know, maybe that's a trend. I'll do that for 30 days. Maybe I'll try that for a week. Maybe I'll, I'll just get my vegetables or I'll get the dirty dozen. But listen, the truth is, every time you eat something that is non-organic, you're putting chemicals in your body. One of the big issues right now that we're a mess, we're dirty. Our bodies can't handle all the toxins coming in. And then we get really, we get, you know, I called it a nasty virus earlier. Really, it's a single-stranded RNA virus. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's not that bad of a deal. It's very easily neutralized if you have a healthy body. If you don't have a healthy body, it's very, very difficult. So with that being said, everything organic this year. So wherever you are, so now you just get in the habit. So today won't be as good as three months from today or six months or, you know, moving forward here. So ideal world, you start to look, all you start to see is organic stuff. So, you know, like that old, like, you know, like someone says, Hey, don't look for the color green. Next thing you can see is green. So I'm telling you all I want you not to look for and look for is organic. So just everything in your life, just focus on getting clean, 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 because that's a, that's a decision that each and every one of us can make better every single day. So, you know, earlier, and I think a lot of my, I wish I could go live right now and have everyone sing this song. So you guys remember the God's garden song, right? The, the jingle or the, yeah. the uh, perfect human diet. Yeah. If it comes from a root, a plant, a tree, if it walks in the garden, swims in the sea, eat it. And everyone gets that. They're like, yeah, that makes sense. Right. But it doesn't say if it comes from a root, a plant, a tree sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, glyphosate, walks around, limps around, gets overweight and inflamed, then eat it. No, we don't say those things because we would not put that in the you know perfect human diet. So this is the time right here, right now. So that's number one. Let this year be all about getting clean, all about going organic and not because it's a cool trend. You don't have to ask your doctor, you know, deep down, you shouldn't be putting chemicals in your body. Yeah, right? yeah. And you said, I mean, it was good. We talked about food, but also the products that you put on your body. So even as you start to run out of things, you know, you go and you're going to go buy some new shampoo or something, keep it in your mind that now you're going to go look for organic brands or, um, you know, different, different products so that you can change out those things that you're using on a daily basis as well. Yeah. And, and fortunately for our, for our listeners, we're going to do a show on just products skincare products, shampoos, all that kind of stuff of just all the things that you can shift. Just like Karen was saying, like, if you run out of one, let's just replace it with something better. It just serves you a little bit better. All right. So that was number one. Let's make this year all about getting organic. Love it. Number two, what we got? Number two, this is the year of the liver. Okay. Yes. So in traditional Chinese medicine, we always talk about how we live by the way of the liver. So everything we've talked about, all of these things that we've done, all these diet modifications, everything comes down to, because if we have all these toxins come in, really what happens is our liver can't handle them. The liver has a certain capacity. And when it gets full, that's when things really break down. So if anyone here that's listening has ever had a random, now you have a food allergy. You didn't, you've been eating eggs all your life and now you can't eat eggs. That's a liver issue. You, you never were really bad with scents. And now all of a sudden perfumes send you off the deep end. That's a liver issue. If you all of a sudden have skin conditions, you get rashes, you all of a sudden as an adult develop psoriasis, you have eczema, that's a liver issue. If all of a sudden you can't handle your alcohol, it makes you sicker, you get a hangover easier. That's a liver issue. If you have a hard time with viruses, that's a liver issue. If parasites like your body, which they probably do, that's a liver issue. So there's so, so many things that really everything boils back down to the liver. So I'll give a couple, you know, like simple things here. One simple is go back to rule, like first number goal here, just get clean. We have to stop polluting the liver. Like we have to stop putting the junk in. If we stop putting the junk in, the liver gets an opportunity to detox. So allergies, list, ladies, listen to this. The night sweats you get at night. The, when you get all hot and you start sweating in the middle of the night and then you get cold, that's your liver. That's your liver heating up. It's working so hard and it can't detox. So your whole body heats up. That's what that is. The beauty is during the cleanse, during the cleanse, Karen, like that'd be one of the, one of the first things that people, the, the ladies will tell me, I'm not getting my night sweats anymore. So that wow. it's huge. It's, I've never had those, but under, I guess if you have them, they're pretty disturbing to life. So 
the, the nice thing is that's one of the things that we get our bodies clean. We don't over, we don't overwork the liver like that. So it's a nice thing. Hormone imbalance is always liver too much estrogen. You got a liver issue. So all of these things boil back down. So some quick, simple ones, one, get clean Two, start incorporating, start incorporating, drinking, you know, a fresh press organic celery juice first thing in the morning beautiful and just cleaning out the liver, cleaning and flushing things out. So gentle on the body, but so good. It's got some bile salts in there. It essentially works as a great, almost like an, a, an electrolyte drink. So just it's so simple, so effective. If you start drinking celery juice first thing in the morning, literally, I would say within a week, you'll see the changes in your bowels, which is pretty cool. Wow. And again, a simple little health tip that you guys can do. You can do it at home. Um, Celery juice is pretty stable. So uh, if you go to a place and get a juice, technically it's pretty good for like three, four days. You know, obviously juice you can do the first day is great, but because it doesn't have any sugars or anything like that in it, it's a little more stable than other, other juices. So it's nice. Um, so that's number one. And then milk thistle. Milk thistle is my favorite herb out there. And the reason what's favorite when it comes to liver, that, and that's because it repairs and detoxifies and there's all kinds of other things and again we're going to have a show on just the liver because this is going to be the year of the liver uh so we'll have a show with just you know just talking about the liver we've got a question here do you have a certain celery juice you recommend yes well if you live local i would go to prima organic cafe happens to be the cafe that we have um but the answer is no just just any organic one, but here's the, here's the challenge. So I think, um, I don't know if I showed this, but so very important. This is a good question. I'm just going to sidestep here for a second. I wish my wife was close here because she would, she's really good at understanding the sex part. If you go to a grocery store and you see celery juice in there, if that celery juice has a, like, you know, a goodbye date and it's more than a week, it has been flash press uh man i wish I, I think it's called fpp kelly if you're around here come on up here and tell me this um she's somewhere in my house here um they flash press or hpp that's what it's called high pressure pasteurization so folks don't get fooled by this did we cover this in any of our topics karen i don't know if we did no i don't i don't think so okay yeah. there's i believe it's called hpp this hpp yeah. is a flash type it's a cold pasteurization that they're using. It's a high pressure pasteurization is what they're doing. But unfortunately, it then down regulates, again, the vitamins, nutrients, and antioxidants that you can get from the juice. So if you're buying in a grocery store, the last one I bought in a grocery store and I was doing on one of my live Facebooks, I showed people, it was good for five weeks. It's not good for five weeks, folks. So we still have to be smart. Most juices you have between one and four days. And then after that, they will oxidize and you'll no longer get the value in terms of those vitamins and minerals and nutrients. So I hope yeah. that answers that question. Not a brand, but organic. Um, you know, we have an organic juicer at home. I'm glad that we have our own shop now because it's a lot of work to juice at home. But listen, being healthy is worth whatever you, whenever someone says it's a lot of work, the reward is always awesome. You know what I mean? Like, Fresh so, juice is so great if you can do it in your own home, right? Like if you do invest in a, in a juicer and, and that's something you you do do in the morning or, or do in your own house or even, I mean, if you if you have one, as you say, it can keep for a few days, do it once every three days or, you know, twice a week, you're juicing your celery juice. Do you add anything else to it? Just celery? Just celery. Straight up celery. Yeah, straight up celery. And, and it usually takes you a little bit to get used to the taste. Um you know, so you might start light, you might start with just like, you know, like eight or 10 ounces, but try to get maybe 16 ounces every morning. And that's before your coffee. So let it be the first thing in there that your liver gets to use to kind of flush things around. So um, it's a practice my wife and I are currently doing right now. And, and we too, um, will be getting we're doing the clean, cleanse with everyone as well. So, you know, we, we try to do the best we can to practice what we preach. So Tom's Got a question here about Suja organic celery juice. It's a big bottle, has a little lemon in it. So likely, Tom, it, it might have a longer um, expiry date, right? Yeah. So, Tom, it's, and that's a real popular one. Um, again, you're going to want to look in there. Look on the bottle. See if they have something. In, and I think I'm saying this right. HPP, high yeah. pressure pasteurization. It's a high pressure process. If that is, it is down-regulating the amount of vitamins, nutrients, and antioxidants we get. And that's why we drink that stuff. 
That is the sole purpose we do it. And listen, I know if you Google it, you're going to see people that are like that, that sell the HPP. They're going to, you're going to have to navigate through it and just trust me. If they can make celery juice stable for a month at a time, it is not what you originally intended for. So um, I get that it's in a big box grocery stores now, but probably not the best option. And listen, not yeah. bad, yeah, but not like, it's probably not going to do what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Not bad for you, just not necessarily going to be as powerful for your liver as what we're talking about fresh celery juice being. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So that was that was two. Year of the liver. What's our number three? Number three is win the morning. Win the morning. Win the morning. Win the morning. I can't say this enough. Yeah. Listen, you know, especially again, I keep referring to the year we had, and I don't even think 2020 was that bad a year, but it really tested us. Like, I don't think it was a bad year. I just think that it really tested us. It tested to see who we were. So winning the morning, what does that mean? Win the morning, I, I promise you, win the morning, win the day. So for those of you who did the level up challenge with us and are about to do the cleanse, there's a little surprise in the cleanse. We carried on some of this stuff. If you did the level up challenge with this, one of the things I had for everyone to do is every day to start the day off very specifically with three things. One, a morning meditation, a three minute meditation. That's it. That's it. And Karen, I want to, I want you to give your comment in just a moment here. <laughs> okay. but three minute meditation. And in that meditation, my practice that I do, it's three minutes of gratitude. And I tell you what, if you start your day off every single day with gratitude, you will win the day. I don't care what else is going on, but I want to flip that over for just a second. Imagine the difference with you getting up and spending three minutes of just pure gratitude, just purely pouring out to the universe love for every soul that you know on the earth. As many names you can get out, all the people present and past that you can think of, your animals, your house, your cars, it doesn't matter, but just pouring the love versus getting up and getting right on your phone getting right up and getting into a business meeting. Because then what happens is you are prey to the energy of that other source. Instead of you bringing the part, the energy to the party, now you're just open to whatever it's bringing to you. So that's number one, three minutes meditation. Number two is get your body to match your mind, get your body moving. So I have the spinal flow, which if you guys want, you can get it on my website. You just go to balance38.com, Dr. Bart videos, spinal flow. That spinal flow right there connects the mind to the body, wakes up every vertebra, it gets the cerebral spinal flow going. It literally wakes up your brain and your nervous system. So, and then of course it's helping the disc. So a spinal flow. And then my favorite part of this three, like three things that must happen every morning, then there's kind of a fourth is power statements. You know, I'm carrying power statements a little bit. People think they're a little weird in here, but that, that's like the I am list. That's the kind of stuff we say, you know, like I am strong. I've got this. I'm one with the universe. You know, my mind is clear. My body is strong. My spirit is free. This, this kind of conversation with ourselves, this kind of conversation edifying ourselves because we're not good at it. We're simply not good at it. We're like, we know we don't get we don't get an opportunity to walk around and say, man, I'm awesome. You know, I'm, I'm a gift from God and I have an opportunity today to be the best version of myself. And we get lost in all of this. And the more we get lost in not being able to edify ourselves, and then it gets harder for us to receive edification. And then when someone says, hey, Karen, you look beautiful today, you're like, nah, you're just saying that. And we deflect. And next thing you know, we're, we're not, we're not like really the best version of ourselves. So winning the morning, meaning finding a morning ritual, so, and now Karen, what would you like to share with us? <laughs> well, we were talking, we were talking before the show and I was saying how much of a good reminder this is because it doesn't have to be long. Like it's three minutes of gratitude. We're talking about power statements you could do for just like one or two minutes. And for me, I uh, have a digital marketing agency here in Australia and I work a lot with the US. So I wake up super early and I sleep right until I have my first meeting at like 4, 5 a.m. And I get up and I jump on. And I'm, I guess to myself, I say, oh, I, I'm too, you know, I really want to sleep. I'm, I wake up too early. I have meetings too early. And so it was just a really good reminder to me that it only is a few minutes and it's something that I really need to, level up in my own practice because I also if you don't set what the routine is you know I have a routine it's get, get up get a coffee and get on a screen 
And as you said, it's amazing that when you do do that, the energy that I can bring to that meeting. I think that was really important what you said, because if I've set my mindset up, I've spent those few minutes for myself, I've stopped the excuses of, oh, it's too early, I can't do this, I've got to jump to this meeting. If I can let some of those excuses go and actually realise that setting up my mind for the call brings a whole different energy to the meeting, uh, I just, yeah, I think that's powerful. So that's uh, that's my 20, one of my 2021 resolutions to upgrade my morning because like, we talk about it, but it's something that slips for myself. Yeah, so it's, it's almost that awareness for all of us, all, you know, all the listeners here today um, or tonight, thinking like, where can I make these subtle improvements? And I will tell you that, um, and I've talked about this with a lot of our different guests, and I tell you, it's a, it's a common thing for a lot of people that I see just really like, and I don't want to use the word successful, but I want to use the word successful meaning in life, like family relationships, being healthy, having businesses and all that. This is a commonality to win the morning. And there's often, often times that, like there's a part of me that just wants to like grab someone, hug them and squeeze them and pray for them that they will develop a morning ritual because it'll change their life. So I've been doing this for a couple of years and I promise you every day, the days that I do it, which is probably like 19 out of 20 days, every day I start in the right place. I'm in the right place emotionally. I'm in the right place mentally. So the day is already going to have enough things coming at me. But the one time I don't, it's flip a coin how the day goes. Like if, if the next person I interact is one of those people that has a morning ritual and they elevate me up. Awesome. If they not, then it's like, I'm going to, you know, you follow the energy. So that's, it's one of those things where I say, even if you're getting up earlier, get up earlier, three yeah. minutes. So the fourth thing there. So those three things, Karen, it's the three minutes of, gra of, of gratitude. Um, and then I had the spinal flow, the power statements and push-ups. Um, yeah push-ups I just love and we're going to talk about that in just a moment here and push-ups again don't take long right like they actually don't I think we think that everything's going to be harder and and to be honest if if this does seem like a lot if you're like me and you're making excuses for why you're not doing your morning ritual then start with one push-up right start with three push-ups start so easy that um it's hard not to do it so yeah, push-ups are, are a good one too. And we're going to roll into that push-up thing in just a moment here because it's, um, again, um, I see it's one of those things where it's just, there's so much value to be gained and it's so simple. You don't even need yeah. gym clothes. You don't need space. If you got a floor, you can do it. So, all right. So that's that's number three. That's win the morning. And if I could put an asterisk next to this one and just say, and listen, listen every one of us has a ritual. And that's what I was, we were, I was joking with you. You're like, I don't have a ritual. I'm like, yeah, you do. You're a ritual. Yeah. It's yes. coffee in my phone. It's not a good ritual, not a good one. But yeah, if you don't have a ritual, you have a ritual. Yeah. So That's recognizing awesome. that and then just carving out a little bit of time. And then just, it just, it's just such an easy, that, that this one is an easy thing to do that has huge dividends that it pays out on a regular basis. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's three. Um, so we'll, we'll move on to number four, four. And the next two are really love. Um, these are ones that, you know, um, if the people are watching my live Facebook, so if you guys, if you're not following me on Facebook, go ahead and follow me. I do a lot. I go live every morning or just about every morning, about five days a week. Um, and I give a simple health tip. And this one, I, this one I just talked about recently. And number four is this. So increase your flexibility. Okay. But there's a catch to that. Yeah. Yes. Think what do we mean by this? The, the catch is this, increase, increase your flexibility in two areas, two areas. One, your emotional and your mental flexibility, and then also your physical flexibility, literally your range of motion. But let's talk about that first one for a moment. Our, literally our mental flexibility. So a rigid mind produces a rigid body. It's always that way. And as we age, it is not uncommon that we become more and more rigid. We come in rigid, more rigid the way that we think and we're stuck in our patterns and habits. And listen, if my wife was sitting next to me, she'd be laughing because she'd be pointing at me as, as the one who was just like, man, I like my routines. I like my rituals. You know, like, just like I like things that clean and simple. Yet at the same time, that routine and that, that constant doing the same things over and over again, it creates a very narrow perspective. Yeah. So, Things like a year, like 2020, and this is for all of us. So listen, the name of the game for 2020 
was adapt, adjust, and execute. And then you'd have to wake up again the next day. Well, what's, what's the world got for me today? Oh, well, this day I can't go outside or I can't leave my house or I got to wear this or this, whatever, right? Adapt again, adjust, and execute again. And the people that were able to do that successfully, to continue to mold themselves, to be flexible. Well, you know, for example, maybe you did work in an office, but you were flexible enough to figure it out and do it on Zoom or do it at home your computer. That type of flexibility is what I'm talking about. The one I really want to dig into here is this. And this, this is the one that kind of like it almost breaks my heart at times. So, and this is when you're unflexible with your eating patterns and your eating habits. So I had a young lady, I say young lady, she was in her 60s, come in the other day and basically in tears, come in and and basically tell me that she's buying her husband a console with me. And I was like, that's in, this is a Christmas gift. Okay. Right. Interesting. You know, uh, and I said, how, how come are you doing that? Does he want to be here? She's like, no. But what he doesn't know that he's about to lose his wife if he doesn't change his ways. Yeah. I said, all right, so you got me here. What are you, what are you talking about? I said, well, he won't change his way. He won't change what he's eating and he's dying. And yeah. Karen, unfortunately, I said, what do you mean he's dying? And I said, it's well. It's so common, really, isn't it? 70 People old yeah. which is it is young you were yeah. just how your dad can out Let's talk about that. Yeah. yeah yeah exactly yeah we can we can talk about that but yeah it 70 can be young it can be but we have to be able to be flexible in in a way that we think about and how the way how we go about things like creating a morning ritual be flexible to get up a couple minutes early if you're tired go to bed earlier be flexible <laughs> In the way that we eat. be flexible and now now you are going to hunt down organic foods regularly be flexible yeah. the fact that maybe you've never meditated in your life before but you're going to sit still for three minutes in the morning be yeah. flexible to open to new ideas and new concepts and maybe open to the idea you've never taken vitamins in your life before but open to the fact that maybe this is the time to start open to the fact that maybe you'll just change your ways a little bit and that flexibility. So am I talking about flexible flexibility? I'm going to in just a moment here, but that emotional phys like that, that mental flexibility. So let this year be, maybe there's more yeses in some areas and more no's in other areas, yeah. but something that allows us to continue to be a little bit more spontaneous that allows us to be a little bit more flexible in, in the way we're going about things. Because I think we're also, I think a lot of people, I think the beauty of some of the things that came from 2021, uh, 2020 was that we're like, man, like, like I got to go have all the fun in my life right here, right now, because that wasn't fun. Yeah. It could happen over and over again. So I got to make and take the opportunities right here, right now. All right. So the second part of flexibility is this. So listen, if you are getting more stiff and rigid in your body, if touching your toes is becoming more difficult, you're getting older. That is, there's two aging processes. Are you getting less flexible? You're getting weaker. And if either one of those are true, you are aging. If you flip that over and you still are getting your range of motion is good and you're getting stronger, you're keeping and maintaining your strength, you're good to go. So literally increasing your flexibility. So what does that mean when people say, well, is there one stretch? Yeah. I mean, it's called yoga. <laughs> yeah. So my, my favorite is literally, so that might be the flexibility. So I was tying these together for a reason. There's so many guys. So listen, women typically have more flexibility to guys. You And literally, you're more flexible emotionally. Guys, do it this way. Well, I always lift my weights this way. Well, God, dude, it ain't working anymore. <laughs> you got to be flexible. You got to be flexible and open to see what serves you at this point in your life. So for me, you know, I know a, a huge part of my life, you know, my physical life was able to you know, continue to improve because I brought yoga in my life. But if you'd asked me 10 or 15 years ago that and said, you're going to become a yogi, I would tell you, no way. That's just not for me. I'm not going to be one of those guys. Um, <laughs> you know, no way, no how. So increasing our range of motion. And again, just reminders, none of us, we we're no one was born rigid. So I know some people say, well, I was born tight. So that's, I've always been tight. No, no, you got tight. You got tight because you got toxic. You got tight because you sit in a car. You got tight because you sit in your desk. Yes, sitting in, you know, you're sitting in school for 18 years, all of those things. That's what makes the human body rigid. Yeah. Yeah. We do so much sitting and it does. It, it, uh, 
it totally makes us rigid. And I think it's great to bring the mind and the body into that because also when you are more flexible, you're able to adapt to things that come to you. We were talking about before the show that my mom always used to tell me to let go of the oars, stop paddling upstream every time I'm trying to resist something that is because we all do it a little bit. We, we resist something's coming at us that we can't change, but we still <laughs> resist it. We were talking about some things that we resist and the only thing we can do really is control our perception of the situation and how we feel about the situation. And so I always love, I, I try and remember, let go of the oars, Karen, stop, try to paddle upstream and just go with the flow a little bit so that you can manage your own emotions in situations that you don't have any control over. Yeah, you know, and the other part, I, I love that saying, it says you where concentration goes, energy flows and then magnet. Yeah. So we're always, like you're saying, like, you're always in that, like, you're fighting to go upstream, like that, it takes a lot of energy. For some a time, lot of energy. Yeah. Of energy go in a, in a direction that's just obviously not, you know, it's not in the flow. So, you know, that, that word, and I think you're going to hear a lot of that terminology this upcoming year of being in the flow. And what does that really mean? That means that and we're going to bring on some people. We're going to really dive it deeper into the flow state. And what does that mean? That means when, man, everything is working right. It's not force fed emotionally, physically, the biochemistry, your spirituality, everything is in the flow. And it doesn't happen by accidents because everything is aligning because we're taking little steps here and there and you get in the flow. And I think all of us know when we're in the flow. You could have seen, you could have felt it in sports. You could have felt it just in your day and your work, your rhythm. But it's just, it's almost like the world stood still as you just kind of moved and grooved right through it. And we can choose to practice getting into that state. And that is by doing that, we have to have this flexibility in our lives and, and physical too. You know, it's interesting. So in yoga, you know, it's really interesting the, the development and the idea of the asana. So let's, let's talk yoga for just a moment here. The asana is the physical practice of yoga. And that's the movement part. And that is what most of us are really, really familiar with. That is like when we, you know, go into all these postures, we do our warriors one and warrior two and, you know, upward dog and downward dog. Well, when you dive deeper into the philosophy of why did they do these things? Why did they do all these crazy postures and become so limber? They did all that so they could sit better. So sit longer and meditate longer. So their mind wouldn't be distracted by the body. So when we're rigid, it distracts our body. And that is how injury comes. That's how breakdown comes. That's when qi gets blocked. So again, when we're, you know, we look at the traditional Chinese medicine philosophy, a rigid body doesn't let qi flow. So if you're losing range of motion, Karen, we're joking. So the audience test for you right now right right hand up left hand behind your back and let's see if you can connect right yeah and then i don't know okay. if you, when i did that good job karen <laughs> everyone try that and then do it with your other arm so these are like and you don't have to like that doesn't mean like you win or you lose but like that's something but I probably win over you right no. <laughs> the reason but i bring it up is i couldn't do that 10 years ago okay yeah I couldn't get close to it 10 years ago. In fact, my wife and like all her teammates and all of them used to almost kind of laugh and joke and be like, because I had all muscles, but I couldn't move my body. So again, that rigidity, but that rigidity makes us very vulnerable for injury. And same thing, when you think about the emotion of frustration, the emotional frustration is very tight and it's very, very rigid. So if we practice our bodies to be loose, it helps the mind. If we practice helping the mind get flexible, it helps the body. And that is why, like if you've ever been, Karen, have you been to a yoga class before? Yeah. yeah awesome. You know what? You know what? If you want to meet a bunch of nice people, yeah. sit on outside of a yoga class. Yeah. And just, just witness the energy that takes yeah. place when it's walking out. Guy, girl, young, old. It's just awesome. Like you just, yeah. you're like, what'd you guys do in there? And yeah. So you open up the mind and the body and it's beautiful. So again, increasing flexibility. My emphasis, you know, like on my encouragement is get involved with yoga. Let it be part of your life. Let that movement, let that thing, let the yoga improve the way that your physical body works and it'll open up your mind as well. 
And I mean, I love going to a class. I think as you're saying, there's an energy in the room, but you can also, if you can't get to a class or, you know, don't let that hold you back. There's lots of uh, YouTube videos. You could just get on and have a look at a free one to start off with, or um, lots of other downloads and, and programs and things so that you can do it at home. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And again, because this is the day and age of like Zoom, right? So there's, everything is available. I personally, like, I'm still like, yeah, I'm, like I'm a gym rat. Like I love, I love exercising literally physically next to people. Yeah. It, it raises, it just, it's just better for me. Like when I, you know, I'm in yoga and I have these people all around me and they're all doing like, they're just breathing and they're moving like same thing. I love big box gyms and everyone's in there making muscles and everything. I love yeah. that energy. There's no way that's out of my life. I know there's like restrictions, but I will be like, I'm the one who's like, I'm going back. I love it. I, you know, and I'll, I'll do my ritual in the morning but there's no chance my workout by myself is anything like when I take my, like my wife's yoga, spicy, spicy yoga class. There's, there's, there's like, it's not even close. Yeah. Awesome. No, no, I, I agree. Um, we had a question on Facebook, actually, just to go back to the liver really quickly. What about water filtering? Is that a good idea um, for your, or is that important for our liver? Yes, yes, and yes. So great question. And again, we're gonna I'm gonna we're gonna bring on some peeps that really talk about the different types of water filters and the best ones that are out there. But any, quite frankly, right now, any filtering is better than no filtering. Um, the waters are absolutely polluted as you drink your water, and then oh, yeah. <laughs> so much in the water. So if you guys notice, I'll often uh, drink these guys, and I think we talked about this one time. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. um, this is Mountain Valley. So here in the States, and I think it's out of Arkansas, it's a natural spring water. So water is huge. You know, I'm a huge advocate of drinking as much as we can. And then downstairs, we do have um, a tabletop. It's called a Berkey, I believe is the name of it. It's not real convenient. Um, so you basically take your water, put it into this big canister, and then it filters it. So it's a, like, it's not the most convenient thing, but it was a stepping stone, quite frankly, several hundred dollars versus several thousands for a whole house. So any filtering is better than no filtering. So if someone says, well, that doesn't have this and that, listen, any filtering is better than no filtering. So yes, filter your water. Yeah. Right. Now, as far as you get it for your shower heads, everything, if you don't have a whole house system, everything you're putting that water on you, those chemicals are going on you and you might even um, you can contact your local water company and get a test done on your water for free. And that's an eye opener. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, all right. So number five, what is our number five? Five. So number four was get more flexible. Number five is get stronger. Yeah. All right. <laughs> But there's two parts of this as well. Yeah. So, so really what this is, is, and this is what I want everyone to take away. So write this down. If you're writing here, I want you to increase your capacity. Yeah. And what does that mean? That means you can handle more, period. That's what I mean. You're a badass. That's what I want you to do. So number five is become a badass. I love it. What do so, we mean by that? Yeah. So the, yeah, <laughs> a couple of things. It means two things. One is that we want to literally increase our emotional fitness. I know we, we spoke on this just a minute ago here, but increase our emotional fitness, meaning that we can handle more. We get better at adapting, adjusting, executing. We, we can spin and pivot quickly. That we recognize that other people, they do not make us sad. They do not make us mad. And there's a lot of sadness and there's a lot of anger going on. And that is on us. That, you know, Karen and I were joking about certain places we might go and if they don't do it our way. So it makes us mad. And that's just their policy. They have that right. You know, that's, that's, you know, like people are allowed to do what they want to do, you know, and, but if we get mad about it, you know, it, it's, it's, on it's us. yeah, it's, it's totally on us. So we made ourselves mad. That store did not make us mad. It's right? so, and I know, yeah. I know everyone listens. Like you've heard that before that no one makes you mad. But when we think about it, we're like, man, then every time I get mad, it's on me. Like it's my fault that I'm vibrating. Yeah like this it's my fault that like I feel like this because this is not a good feeling so and the answer is yes so how yeah. do we do that? mm -hmm. and, the, and the, that's really the more powerful question we have to our mind needs to be in a better place so when we're doing things like focusing on getting clean 
when we're doing things like focus on our liver for the, you know, making this a year of the liver, focusing on things like increasing our flexibility, emotional and physical, getting stronger in our lives, both mentally and physically. When we do these things and we're, we get all these things that we know where we're going, we don't have room for that. And that is when we increase our emotional fitness because the emotional fitness, if we just stay in that game and we're not practicing all these other things, you never get strong because you're always just kind of getting, you're just getting pulled around. So that emotional fitness starts with having a clear, clear understanding that you want to be happy. You want to be strong. You want to be confident. You want to be powerful. You want to be productive. You want to be successful. You want to be loving. You want to be kind. You want to be the best husband. You want to be the best wife. Those, and that's what I mean by the power statements. And you see how this all kind of comes together. And it's like, you know, all of this, quite frankly, I think it's all free that we're talking about. Like it doesn't, this isn't something that you have to spend a lot of money on. This isn't taking a ton of time, but that type of self-talk really shifts our emotional fitness. And then the second part is, Hey, listen, we got to get stronger physically, physically. We have to get stronger collectively across the board. There's some interesting studies that we are becoming weaker as a human race. Yeah. We used to be able to lift heavy shit. We used to think, go out, yeah. pick up a log or split a piece of wood. People can't do it anymore. We're built differently. When we see what's taking place with the way guys are built over the, you know, over the last, you know, like hundred years or so, it's very, very interesting, or two, 300 years. Very interesting. Our structures are changing because we're not physically strong anymore. So one of the simplest ways, the best way, my favorite way. So get your pen and pen out, pen and pad out. This is how we're going to do it. Everyone here for this year, push-ups every single day through the entire year. And here's how we do it. Tonight, you get down on the ground and you find your one set max. Okay, so you get on the ground. And listen, guys and girls here, well, we always do it full plank position, not on your knees. And, you, and whatever your best max is, like, you know, it doesn't mean you have to touch your chest or anything like that, but just whatever your max is, like your best set of push-ups. Maybe it's five, maybe it's 10, maybe it's three. We had people in the level up did one, I know. They're amazing. By the end. Yeah. There were 30, 40, 50, 60 days. Listen, one of the girls from the from the group the other day, man, if I think I got this right, she's 63 and she does 63 a day. So here's amazing. Amazing, right? Let me finish this. So you do one set. If you're a guy, you double it and add 10. So if I could do 20 push-ups, I double it, that's 40, and I add 10, 50. 50 is my number for the day. I don't have to do 50 in a row. I can do 10, 10, 10, 10. I can do 20, 20, 10, but I have to do 50 every day. So I maintain my strength. And listen, you, ne you don't have to raise your number. Maybe in a year, you think about raising your number, but just that number every single day. Ladies, you're one set, double it, add five. So if you can do 10, you do double it. That's 20, add five, 25 <clears throat> every single day. And I promise you, here's what I promise. In 30 days, you're going to be so much stronger, so much stronger in 30 days, so measurable, so easy, and you'll feel it. Like, and that's, that's what's cool thing about it. Like, and it feels good to feel strong. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And we were talking earlier about how that is one of the things as you age as well, right? Like you do, you get or you lose muscle mass or, or it's important. In other words, as you get older to maintain muscle mass, doing things like this to maintain some strength. Yeah. So really there's, there's two things that are key about aging. And if you want to know if you're aging one, if you're losing range of motion and you're losing strength. So I could have tossed in there. And one of the things I was going to toss in like into the five health hab like habits for 2021 measure everything measure. Yeah. Stop guessing. And because I think in a recent, and I, I haven't always had that philosophy, but now I do, especially now that I'm no longer 20. I measure my blood work. I measure my labs. I, uh, it's, the more I know, the more it motivates me to take action in the right direction. Push-ups are beautiful. They're, literally, when I was 40 years old, I swear to you, I could not do 40 push-ups in a row. And now I'm 51. And now, so I videotape them and I send them to this one guy every year. Um, I, Dave, Dr. Hogg said, I send them to him as well. Um, <laughs> so now at 51, I can do 51 push-ups in a row, which I, yeah. it, 11 years ago, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do it. 
I wasn't strong enough to do it. So it's, it's a nice benchmark in every single one of them. I have so many clients over the years that still do their pushups. It's, it, it's, it, it makes me so happy all the time when I hear them. And there you can see they're a little stronger in their shoulders and they're 50 and 60 and 70 years old, but they're doing their pushups. It's just, it's, it's, it's such an easy, wonderful thing. I love that. Um, we've got a question in the chat here. What about inclined pushups? Are inclined pushups okay? Yeah. So whatever you need to do, whatever becomes your benchmark. So there's no wrong or right here. You don't have to do different angles or anything like that. You don't have to mix. People ask me, do I do them? Why do I do? I pretty much do almost like a chaturanga push up. It just works good for my body. And it is that number every single day. So if incline works for you, maybe you got some shoulder stuff going on or something, you're inclined, but you got to figure out your max, double it, add 10 or add five, whatever it's going to be. And that is every single day. And I'll tell you another thing, Karen, my wife will test this. I can't tell you how many times I've literally rolled off of the couch after we're watching a movie and we're about to go to bed. I rolled off the couch on the floor to finish it because it also gives you that simple sense of completion. Yeah. Like it's, it's just one of those things you go, yeah, I did it today. No, I didn't have an hour workout in hot. I didn't get to the gym. I didn't do all those things, but every day I do that. Like I can say, yeah, I did something today. I mean, yeah my strength i maintained my physical activity we don't always have to go to the gym and crush ourselves so i'm a huge huge fan of, of that simple thing here so i'd love to see it and then so th those of you that are cleansing uh, with us just so i can level up man we're doing our push-ups again we're raising the bar. we're absolutely raising the bar push-ups every day food will be the easy part we're gonna we're gonna rock it out i think also it's it's kind of cool like if if you've never really been able to do a push-up and then and then you do you're someone like we had in the challenge you know, you've never really been able to do, you know, do one or two push-ups, and then you're able to get to 30, 40 push-ups. I think once you physical things like that are so cool because you you uh you didn't think you could do it, and then suddenly you've changed your point of reference. Hey, I can do this, and I didn't think I could do it. So what else that I don't think I could do can I now do? You know, like it it change that piece can be really powerful as well, even with something as simple as a push-up. Yeah. Amen to that too. So you're absolutely right. Like those, that's how we create the emotional fitness. That's how we get stronger physically, emotionally, because we take on tasks like that. And next thing you know, we're like, yeah, it wasn't that bad. I just got literally physically stronger. And then even on an unconscious level, we start to ask ourselves, what else, what else am I being a wimp about? Like, what else could I do? And it could be physically, emotionally, spiritually, it could be anything. And next thing you know, it just becomes this momentous, like, positive action that you're taking in your life so um makes me excited i like i want to go do some push-ups right now yeah. yes exactly it is though i mean i think it's in every aspect of our life you actually sometimes have to take action to be able to see the next bit mm -hmm. you you can't uh yeah you can't see it yet but once you start taking some action you get there so uh jean in facebook says she still does 50 every day how amazing 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 Yes. So good. Um, someone else on Facebook also said they have a Kangen water filter and they love it. I don't know if you know about that one. I know a little bit about that. Yeah. So listen, anything that's filtering the water better than nothing. No doubt about it. But we'll, we'll, we'll uh, I'll make sure that, that it's on our radar on our list of things that we're going to cover as topics and we're going to go through when we do the health products for the yep. home, make a healthy home, like an organic home. We'll talk about different um water filtering processes. And again, you can invest a fair amount of money in them, you know, and, and listen, it's, it's one of those things that maybe you, you put it on your radar because it's that important because all the water. So listen, when we talk about showers, that's why I mentioned when we put hot water on and our pores open up, it's going in faster. So things like fluoride and all that other kind of stuff, it's going in there faster. So We'll have that conversation. We'll talk about getting all the toxins out of the house because this is the year of getting clean. This is the organic year. I love it. Awesome. Well, I think we've gone over a bunch of tips. Hopefully people have some uh, solid things to focus on for 2021. I'm, I'm excited for 2021. I always kind of like new year. It's like a new, I don't know. I know it's just another day, but it always feels like a new start uh, uh, um, point to keep leveling up. So let's, uh, let's finish up with our last question. Uh, what is one action that our listeners can take today to move them towards their goal of becoming superhuman? You know, I, of course I didn't prepare for this. Uh, no, we didn't talk about it again. 
you know, I, I think, I think, I think it would be making sure that we're, we're allowing ourselves to ask the question that says, if I was to be the best version of myself, what would it look like? Oh, it's a good one. No barriers on that. So maybe even write down what it looks like. What do you look like physically? How do you stand? How do you talk? What is your relationship like? What is, what is your, you know, what is your spirituality like? What's your business like? And just ask the question and just see what comes to your mind. Our doubts are going to try to fill it in, but just ask the question and then write down, like, do like, like everything you asked for was going to come for, you know, like come to fruition, ask that question. It's a powerful, most of us don't even go there anymore. So I think that'll be the question that I'll leave with this, how to level up, at least start asking the question. If I could be, you know, the, what would the best version of myself look like on a daily basis? What, what is that? Yeah. And get excited about it. It doesn't have to be super realistic for now. Like you're all, or, I mean, it is realistic, but your mind will tell you it's not realistic. Go there, right? Go like to that place. Awesome. I love it. Well, uh, thanks so much guys for joining us. Uh, we love seeing you live on here every week. We'll be back same time um, next week with uh, your brother which is going to be exciting. Yeah. So, um, so again, like, yeah, so it's super exciting. So it's going to be interesting to, because apparently he looks a little bit like me. Um, <laughs> those of you uh, ever met my brother, he's, uh, he's an awesome guy. He's one of my best friends, one of my mentors, and I'm going to bring him on next week. And we're going to talk about literally the mindset to, to win, like to win moving forward here. So I'm um, just those quick announcements. Dave Hogstead on February 6th. Um, make sure that if you, if you want, if that sounds something you want to do in person, we're not, that won't be live. So well, it'll be live, but not on zoom. Uh, make sure you reach out to the office and get yourself registered for that. And then of course, um, the cleanse, you still have an opportunity. If you're on the fence, jump, just jump in. It's going to be fun. it will be a perfect time. Just like you're saying, Karen, to draw a line in the sand and just kind of move ourselves forward. And then next week, my brother is coming out, which I'm super excited for. Super, super excited for. Yes. Awesome. Love it so much. Yeah. And so again, everyone, thanks for being here tonight. Keep doing the thing. Keep sharing them out. Keep spreading the love. And of course, we're going to take deliberate action for your mind, for your body, your overall wellness. Y'all be awesome.